Hi there, my name is Will, and today I'm excited to welcome you to week two of the Data Engineering Zoom Camp. For this week, we're gonna be looking at workflow orchestration and how you can orchestrate your code with Kestra. Now, from my understanding in week one, you looked at SQL, you looked at Docker, and you looked at Postgres. Now, we're gonna be able to combine all of that together using Kestra to make things simple. The first thing we need to start with is what is orchestration? What does this actually mean? Now, an analogy I like to use is that orchestration is like a musical orchestra. Now you've got all these different instruments. You've got violins, you've got trumpets, you've got flutes, and they all make different sounds and they all need to be done at different times, but some of them need to be done at the same time. There's a lot of complexity here, and that is why some of the best orchestras in the world are highly, highly skilled individuals. Now, that's great and all, but how do we relate that back to Python code? Now, an orchestra is only really successful by having a conductor, someone who can stand in the middle and make sure that all of these instruments know exactly when they need to come in and at what points. This is super useful because it means that you get to hear the benefits of all these instruments together to hear very, very good music. And that's the same with our Python code here. We've got all these different Python scripts that do various different things for us, but running them independently is only a small part of the job. It's been getting them all to work together and make sure that they can rely on one another, they can access data from each other, and also from your perspective, the user, you understand what's going on when you've got all this complexity. So with that in mind, what is Kestra? And why is Kestra gonna help me this week with orchestrating my workflows? Now, Kestra is an all-in-one automation and orchestration platform where it's gonna allow you both to do stuff like ETL, which is what you're going to do over the next couple of weeks. Also allows you to do batch data pipelines. It allows you to schedule workflows to run on a routine, or maybe you want them to run on an event-based schedule. When data arrives, then it should execute your workflow. There's lots of things here that allow Kestra to automate a lot of the process of running your data pipelines without you having to lift a finger. Now, one of the best bits about Kestra is it gives you the flexibility on how you control your workflows. So it gives you the option to do it in no code, low code or full code, giving you lots of options. And even if you do everything in full code, being able to have the topology view, which you can see on the left-hand side here, help you visualize what stages are inside of your workflow and how they're gonna come together is super helpful in building these complicated and complex pipelines. Now we, we're gonna focus on Python this week, but Kestra allows you to write any language you want, which is super useful because while Python is a super versatile and useful language, it's not always the right tool for the job. Some pipelines might use things like Rust or C, purely before their performance benefits, if you're working with large, large models and large data sets. And that is where Kestra gives you the versatility to choose what's best, and it allows you to separate the orchestration logic and the logic for your code away from one another, so you can decide what's best for you. And on top of all of that, it allows you to monitor everything and have a really good insight into what's going on with these pipelines. With the Gantt view that you can see on the left-hand side here, it makes it really straightforward to see at what point each task is at and the logs they're producing. You can also see on the dashboard, if your flows ran overnight successfully, and if they didn't, which ones are scheduled to run next? So you know what's happening with all of your pipelines and your workflows without having to dig into the details to find out what's going on. And all of this is enhanced by over 600 plugins of all your favorite tools. And some of those tools include things like all of the cloud platforms that we're gonna be using this week, as well as things like Databricks, Snowflake, DBT, and more. So this means that you can access all of those tools that you want to use without having to write every single thing in Python code. So that gives you a bit of an overview of Kestra. So let's have a look at what we're going to cover this week to allow you to build these powerful workflows with your existing code. So this week, we're gonna specifically look at an introduction to Kestra. We've got a video series to help you understand the fundamentals of Kestra and the concepts to help you start building your very own workflows. Following that, we're gonna to start to build our own ETL pipelines. To begin with, we're gonna extract data on New York taxis, and then we're gonna load that into a Postgres database. Following that, we're gonna then put that into Google Cloud, both into Google Cloud Storage, as well as BigQuery, where we can then perform more operations on it and use the power of 
of the cloud to our advantage. We're then gonna look at making our workflows dynamic by being able to pass in parameters at execution to allow different things to happen without having to create different workflows. This gives us flexibility to control how our workflow should run without having to manually code it all in. Afterwards, we're gonna look at how we can schedule this and set this up to run without us having to lift a finger and then also be able to run backfills when things were offline and being able to fill in executions that weren't successful. And to finish it all off, we're then gonna look at how we can install it on Google Cloud so we can then have it running in production and then how we can use Git to be able to sync our flows and code from a Git repository to the cloud so that we can see it in production and know that it's running as we would expect. Now it's worth noting, we have a huge series of videos on YouTube on all the different things about Kestra. So while our documentation is really rich, we also have a number of videos to help you get started too. So there is something for everyone involved. So with that in mind, I think it's time to give a quick demo of Kestra to help you understand what Kestra looks like in action and then we can get started with week two. Jumping into Kestra here, I have a simple pipeline here that is going to run an extract, a transform, and a query. Now, let's have a look at what it's doing here to achieve that. Now, to begin with, our workflow has an ID and a namespace. This is how we're gonna organize this workflow. To begin with here, we have the ID, which is the name of our workflow, and this is unique in Kestra. Followed by that, we have the namespace, which is sort of like a folder on where we're gonna store this. Now, we've got a namespace here called ZoomCamp, so we can keep all of the flows that we're creating for the ZoomCamp together. But if you're working in a more complex team, you might use these namespaces to separate things by operation or team. Following that, we have inputs, which are values we can pass in at the start of our workflow execution to then be able to define what happens. Now, this one's looking for an array with two values inside of it. In this case, brand and price, which are default. But if I press execution, I can actually change what these values will be so that we can get different results for different executions. Afterwards, we've got our tasks. And as you can see here, the first task here is going to extract data from dummyjson.com. And following that, we've got a Python script. And this one is where the Python code is directly inside of our workflow, but we can also also use Python code in separate files using the commands task too. So there's something for everyone. Now here, we're getting that value from the first task and we're passing it to the next task as an input file. So we can then start to process the data inside of it. And as you can see here, as we scroll down, you can see in the Python code here, we're starting to transform the data to produce a new file, which is called products.json. Afterwards, we can then pass products.json to our query here to then be able to get an even fine-tuned query of what we're after at the end. So let's see what this looks like in, in action so we can visualize what the end result will be. When I press execute, I get those input options, but we're happy as they are, so we're gonna press execute here and we get this wonderful Gantt view that helps us visualize which task has run when and at what point our workflow is at. And if I click into these, it gives me some log messages as well to help me understand what's going on. We can see the Python one was able to run that inside of a Docker container to keep our dependencies isolated. And as we can see, it was successful. And we can see that that SQL query at the bottom was also successful. So if I go to the outputs tab now, I will be able to view some of the data generated for the different tasks. So we can see we've got the file here, the JSON that was extracted at the beginning. And I can preview that here and see that there's a lot of data here that is not very useful to us in its current form. I can see that the Python code also produced some data. I can see that we've got a JSON file here with products.json and another one called data.json. And as we can see here, loads of different data here to work with. And then finally, we have the query. And here is where we get a table with the data in a much more organized, sorted format. And it's much more useful to us than that original JSON value. And we can then download this, or we can then pass it to another task to be able to maybe upload it to the cloud or send it into Slack. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of what Kestra is all about and how you can build complex workflows using YAML. I can't wait to see what you all get up to this week. So do let us know in Slack how you're doing and if you have any questions, because we'll be around to give support where possible. Over the next few videos, we're gonna help you understand how you can perform ETL both to Postgres, but also to BigQuery and GCS. So stay tuned for those. And again, we're looking forward to see what you orchestrate.